pray. It is a, a wonderful time to be here. I, I, I just love coming back to my home church. Uh, I'm out quite a bit uh, preaching at different churches and uh, uh, I know that as I go uh, preaching forward that you here at the home church is always praying for me and I, I can feel that when I'm in these different churches. So I, I really appreciate that. Uh, it, it means a lot. Uh, even though I'm not here physically, we're here uh, mentally sometimes, uh, spiritually all the time, okay? This morning, our text is found in Isaiah chapter 66, uh, verse 13. Uh, Isaiah 66 is the last chapter uh, in the book of Isaiah, and we'll look at verse 13. The title this morning is an unusual title. <clears throat> it's a title I think that uh, uh, is going to shock some people. It's called the, the Mother Comfort of God. Now, many times we think of the comfort, the fatherly, fatherhood of God, but sometimes we neglect the other side of that. He is total, uh, just like the, uh, the, 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 the Bible is complete. It's got 66 books, the Old Testament, New Testament. You can't have one without the other. And, and we're going to see this morning something that I, I'm, I'm not sure you've all seen this before. But if you're in Isaiah 66, verse 13, say amen. If you're not there, say amen. Well, we'll wait for you then. Amen. It, it's page 658, okay? <laughs> That's in my Bible. Isaiah 66, verse 13. As one whom his mother comforts, so I will comfort you. And you shall be comforted in Jerusalem. And what that word there is the word nakam. It's a Hebrew word, and it means and it's used 65 times in the Old Testament of comfort. That that uh, comfort that you feel that you get. And he says, I will comfort you. He's compared to a mother who comforts her child. Uh, and so we're looking at it in that aspect. Now, as a father, God. God provides for us for our needs. He provides every need. He meets every need that we have. Maybe not our greeds, but he'll meet every need that we have. He trains us. He corrects us. He educates us. And he uh, is teaching us love in service in the great scheme of things, the great family that we are all a part of. But in Isaiah 66, verse 13, I, I just love this, we have something deeper. Now, we saw the, the help of the Father, but look how deep he goes. A, a mother is a ministering angel in time of pain and sorrow. She's always there ministering. Now, before I go any further, let me put a, a little caveat to that. Let me, let me put a little something to that. Not only godly mothers uh, 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 comfort, but also godly women. Because uh, maybe uh, it might be that you aren't a mother yet or haven't uh, the ability to have, be a mother. It's still talking about godly women. So it, 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 it entails the whole thing. And we'll go on and I'll talk about that a little bit further. But notice that God combines in himself, puts it together in himself, all the virtues of a perfect character. The fatherhood, the motherhood, putting them together. He is not only strong and protective as a father, but he is also tender and comforting as a mother. Whoo, glory. Now, y'all can say amen. Now, listen, it, 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 this is going to get gooder. That's, that's not, it, it, this is going to get gooder. Are right, you ready for it? Paul, and, and we're going to go to this a little bit later, but Paul uh, refers to God in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 2 through 3. He refers to God as the God of all comfort. We'll get there in just a minute. Well, the first thing that, that I'd like to share with us this morning, you find on your outline, that just exactly, I, I, here's a question, just exactly how does God 
comfort His children. How, how does He do that? Well, there's four things I'd like to share with you how He comforts us, and, and there's many more, uh, many more than what I've got. But, but these four I'd like to, to really just home in on. First of all, God comforts us by His presence. He says in the Bible, I will never leave you nor forsake you. He's always there. He's always at our presence. We just don't see Him many times. I, I don't know. I've never seen Him. But I felt Him. I, I felt that comfort that He gives to us. He comforts us by His Word, the Word of God. Any situation you find yourself in, praising or if you're having a problem, guess what? You'll find the answer right here. Everything has been given to us in His Word, so He comforts us. When we, in times of need, in times of trouble, where do we go? We go running to the Father, and guess what? He comforts us by His Word. And the third thing He comforts us uh, with is by his generosity. Oh, he provides all of our needs. Everything we need, he provides for us. I didn't see, hear, hear any amens on that. I, I'll, I'll reserve that for a little bit later. Let me give you an example. I, God is so... He is so great. He, he is he's so generous. Uh, it, that You know what he does? Every night, he paints a beautiful sunset and then throws it away and does it again the next day. That's how generous, that, that, I mean, he's extravagant. I mean, that's extravagant. Beautiful, paints a beautiful sunset, throws it away and gives us another one the next day. Now, isn't that good? I told you it's going to get gooder. You, you'll, you'll say amen before the day's over, amen? <clears throat> And by his, he comforts us, number four, by his silence. Just by being quiet. Be still and know that I am God. Amen. Amen. That's how he comforts us, folks. Now, uh, let me tell you a story. <coughs> if I wouldn't drop my glasses. <laughs> Vietnam. A young man went over to Vietnam and got shot up something fierce, really beat up, uh, re really bad. And it was so bad that he went blind. Well, he went, they took him to Rheinstead Air Force Base in Germany to recoup and everything else. His mother found out about it, and his mother got on a plane and flew over there. The mother walked into the son's room, never said a word, just went over and touched him. And he says, Mom, how are you doing? Immediately, immediately he knew who she was. That is the same way it is with God. We can't see Him, and yet we feel His touch on our lives every day. Whoo, you talk about extravagant. You talk about uh, uh, generosity. He's there for us if we will just, just take advantage of it. I have a poem that I'm not very good at, at citing poems, so if I mess it up, don't, don't laugh too hard, okay? Oh, mother, when I think of thee, tis but a trip to Calvary. The gentle hand upon my brow <laughs> I'm lead, is leading me to Jesus now. That's what a mother does. Now, what I want to talk about this morning, Christian mothers and godly women. You can't separate the two. And in fact, if you want to go do some research, and I would encourage you to do that, many of the women that were barren in the Old Testament and the New Testament, guess what, were used mightily of God. So just because you haven't had children, or, or, or that, that doesn't mean that God is not going to use you. He's going to use you mightily because you are a godly woman. Oh, I, I lift you up this morning. You see, uh, Christian, uh, Christian mothers and godly women, I, uh, in my opinion, are the world's greatest asset. They're the world's greatest asset. The greatest human influence. Listen to me, folks. The greatest human influence, the most wholesome and substantial uh, contribution comes from godly women and Christ, uh, uh, Christian women and godly women. Christian mothers and God. I'll get this right yet. Uh, oh, my dear friends, turn to keep your finger in Isaiah. Turn with me to 2 Corinthians. That's the New Testament. First, uh, 2 Corinthians, first chapter. Chapter 1, verses 2 and 3. Or 3 through 6, I think. Let me see here. I'll get it right here. 3 through 6. Listen as I read. 
Follow along. Take your pen and underline. It's okay to write in your Bible, okay? It doesn't hurt a thing. Starts out in verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of some comfort. What does it say? What does all mean? All, everything. Oh, he says, and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our tribulation. He comforts us in what? Tribulation. That the, we may be able to comfort those who are in any trouble with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforting by God. Whew. That's a mouthful. He says, so he comforts us so we can help comfort other people. That's, that's what he says, kind of paraphrased by Larry, but that's what he means. He says, listen, you, the comfort that you receive from God, you're to pass on to others. Ooh, pass it on. Amen. Uh, verse 5. For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also abounds through Christ. That's comfort through Christ. Now, if we are afflicted, it is for your consolation and salvation, which is effective for enduring the same sufferings, which we also suffer. Or if we are comforted, it is for your consolation and salvation. Folks, are you getting it? Are you getting it, the, the comfort of God? Back in Isaiah, what was it? The mother comfort of God? The way a mother comforts her child? The way we were comforted? Verse 7. And our hope. <laughs> you know what the definition of hope is? A fact not yet realized. It's a fact he's going to comfort us, and we just haven't realized it completely and fully yet. And when we need it, it will come. And our hope for you is steadfast, because we know that as you are partakers of the sufferings, so also you will partake of the consolation or the comfort. That's a, that's a whole sermon in itself right there. Uh, and now, in the Greek, what he used, uh, uses here is parakalesis, and it means calling to one side. Well, all ten of these, uh, I, these ten comfort statements or words, all ten of them come from the Greek word uh, parakaleo. And you know what it means? We get our word comforter from it. Parakaleo. You can, you can take that and practice on that one. Uh, I, I practiced a long time on that so I can get that aleo. Uh, Parakaleo. Uh, I like that. The emphasis here in 2 Corinthians, the emphasis is in the consistency of that comfort. It's constant. It's not temporary. It's not spasmodic. It is there. And, and you could just, you know, if you wanted to, you, you, you could just take this verse and make it say, who always comforts us. You could put all those three through seven and say, who comforts us all the time. He is our comfort. And so it can also be an exhortation. A lifting, an exhortation means to lift up to us to seek the comfort of God. Have you ever sought the comfort of God? One of the things that we need to do is seek the comfort of God. Well, the second point I'd like to speak to us today is God's purpose in motherhood. What is God's purpose in motherhood? Uh, what does it mean? Well, God uses mothers for the development of the soul life of their children. The development of their soul life. That's what God, how God uses that. Uh, uh, we have a phrase. Uh, it's not a biblical phrase, but it sounds good. The hand that rocks the cradle rules the world. Uh, 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 listen, oh, listen to this very closely. Ladies especially, perk up your ears. Through the power of God, and only the power of God, through the power of God, women bring into this world immortality. Immortality, something that shall never cease to be. That child that you brought into the world, guess what? Is immortal and it'll never cease to be. Woo! Have you thought about that, ladies? This is an encouragement. God, now you didn't do it. You understand, you didn't have any, well, you had a little bit to do with it. I remember thinking back, you had a little bit to do with it. 
But bottom line is this. Through the power of God, you are bringing immortality into the world. Something that will never cease to be. Hmm. Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. How many people know or have ever heard about Henry Wadsworth Longfellow? I was afraid of that. Not many people, I, I, when I started putting this together, I said, they don't even know who he is. A great poet. He said, one of the things he said, is even as Christ died upon the cross in, in, in that last hour, where were his thoughts? He was in, in, in excru excruciating pain, unutterable agony of death. And what did he think about? He was mindful of his mother. He said, John, there's your mother. Take care of her. Uh, Ralph Waldo Emerson. Anybody heard of it? No, y'all haven't either. Well, he was another poet. You, you all need to get some, you know, reading some of this. Uh, uh, Longfellow was great. Emerson was great. Uh, he said this. Men are what their mothers make them. Think about that. Men are what their mothers make them. Third thing, and we'll be finished about 2 o'clock. Since, since you don't have a baccalaureate or graduation until 2, we can go to about 1.30, right? I like that. Amen. The third thing I'd like to discuss this morning is the motherhood of God. Back to Isaiah 66 uh, and verse 13. In Isaiah 66, 13, we see that God is compared to a mother who comforts her child. That, that's who he's comparing them to because we can understand that. We can relate to that. It's not foreign to us. We can understand that. To see, the, the, that's the love of a mother for her infant child is probably the strongest attachment there is. It, it, it's, it's just, you know, it's there. It, it, you just can't get beyond it. And, and as I think about this, what fuller, what, what, uh, uh, what more charming, I like that word charming, uh, what more charming revelation of God's nature is, is that uh, picture of God being a mother. Now we know that he's the father, and, but he's also a devoted mother. I'll get myself in trouble on this one theologically, I'll guarantee you that. But it's right there. That's what it says. Hey, Isaiah 60, 66 verse 13 is probably the sweetest and tenderest picture of the character of God. We're looking at the total character of God. It shows not only the nature of God, not only the nature of God, but also His character. The God of all comfort. Where are you receiving your comfort today? You see, as God comforts a mother by His gracious word. Uh, his gracious word. What are the, some of the things that go along with His gracious word? How He comforts. How He comforts us. Well, they're comfortable words. They're loving words. They're words that are, uh, they allow for any circumstance. Any, any mistakes that we make. The God's words are comforting. And guess what? It shows His total, unconditional love. Total, unconditional, no condition. He puts absolutely no condition on His love. And He says, here I am. Won't you come? Ooh, my dear grip. You know, I notice that when God's children are in distress, He does not continue to dig it in. He doesn't keep gouging the wound, does He? Because there's power to heal in His Word. And my dear friends, we need to call upon that. The tender mother comfort of God. The, and this is the last part of your, your outline. The tender comfort loving of, uh, of God. It asks no questions. His, love ask, his comfort and love asks no questions. He utters no reproach. He doesn't say, you dirty, rotten scoundrel, you shouldn't have done that. He, he never says that. He never puts us down. He demands no explanation. Well, why in the world did you do that? You know, when my boys get a little uh, out of hand, I, I go to them and say, okay, why'd you do it? God never says that to us. 
You see, He never says, well, why did you do that? Uh, why did you not call upon my name? He never says that. That's the tender mother comfort of God that surrounds us. He only has sympathy. Just as a devoted parent, He has sympathy for us. You see, uh, I've got a, a little ditty that I put together. Maybe, maybe you'll like it, maybe it won't. Uh, I've, got to, I've got to remember it again. <laughs> uh, it, it's uh, silent sympathy is soothing sad. Silent sympathy is soothing sad. Oh, my dear friends, when we carry everything to God, when we carry everything to I mean everything to God in prayer, maybe going through a, a, a torturing time of doubt, maybe you're doubting, well, maybe I shouldn't be doing that, what am I doing? Maybe uh, worldly lust has been thrust upon us, you know, uh, the world is, uh, through the television, through media, through uh, uh, the uh, internet, it's being thrust upon us. I mean, it's, it's, it's attacking us. How about, how about the, uh, uh, the uh, when you get hurt in the heart? I, I, I guess that'd be a, uh, uh, get stuck in the heart. Would that be a good one? When somebody hurts you, <laughs> uh, you, you don't have a heartache. How about deep, deep gashes of disappointment? It comes upon us. I'm disappointed because this didn't happen. I thought it would happen and so on and so forth. Uh, he comforts us always with His forgiving presence. It's His forgiving presence. Uh, folks, you know, we weep over a lot of things. And what we weep over, what, what we're having sorrow over, it'll probably remain. But, there's a conjunction there. But, by carrying everything to the mother heart of God. Listen to me. <laughs> we are comforted. We need to take it all to Him. But, you know, we kneel before Him. We can't see Him, but we kneel before Him. We speak to Him, but He does not speak to us audibly. and We get no audible answer. Yet, when we leave His presence, when we get up out of His presence, we are calmed and comforted. Because of who He is. You know, when, when children, when children need comfort, where do they go? They don't go to dad. When that child falls down and skins up his knee or, or falls off his bicycle, where does he go? Mom, 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 I'm hurt. Then go to dad. <laughs> Dad, you don't, you don't know how to comfort me. Mom does. <laughs> uh, are, you, are you getting it? Amen. I remember this as clear as it was yesterday. And that's been a while. When I came home from school, and I had that piece of paper that I had done in class, I had come off that bus, Mom, Mom, look what I've done. Look, look what happened. You know what the sad part of today is? Many of the kids are getting off the, off the bus to an empty house called Latchkey Kids. And five minutes after they're off that bus, this gets thrown in the corner and they lose all the enthusiasm for it. That's what we're losing today. And I, I don't apologize for saying that. I, we, as a, a husband and wife, made the determination that no matter what my wife would not work until the boys went to school we didn't care about the money we struggled sometimes but I wouldn't trade it I would go back and do the same thing again now when they got into school the, the deal was you can go to work but you have to be home when the bus gets there if you can't be home when the bus gets there, you're not going to work. Fortunately, she was a teacher, and uh, uh, she was there. She would ha meet them. But it's very important today because that comfort is lacking in some areas. Now, that same tender, loving comfort and sympathy is what God shows us. He offers that same thing to us today. That comfort and that tenderness and sympathy. 
He heals us and gladdens. He, he puts a, uh, loves us unconditionally and He cares for us just as a mother could. That's how God loves us. Oh, he's such a part of us. Now, uh, with all this in mind, uh, putting this all together, isn't it strange, doesn't it strike you as being strange to think that man will try to find comfort in anything other than God? He'll try to do it. He, he, he'll try to do that. He, he will uh, try and drown himself in strong drink. Well, that'll give me comfort. And it just adds to his problems. Then he'll try to work harder. He'll become a workaholic and put more hours and hours trying to get that comfort. And it'll never be there. It's only going to come from the comfort of God. And drugs. Uh, that's a big thing. These opioids or opioids or whatever they're called. It is rampant today. <clears throat> they're trying to find that peace and that comfort in drugs. And inevitably, inevitably... They try to find comfort in suicide. And it's not there either. It's only found through the blood of Jesus Christ. All the while, all the while, all these things they're trying to do, God stands with open arms. He's standing there pleading with them. He's, it's open to every individual. He says, here I am. Come unto me, all of you who are weak and heavy laden, and I will give you what? Rest, comfort. There it is. But man tries to go any other way. Jesus said in Matthew uh, uh, 23, 37. 23, 37. Right? 37, 23? No, it's 23, 37. <sighs> oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. How often I would have called you together and gathered you to get your children together. As a, as a hen gathers her, her brood under her wings. And you would not. I have an illustration, but I don't know where to go. Y'all are, are home folk. You love me so I can say this. I love this illustration. Given it too many times, I probably told it here, but I'm going to give it again. A mother hen. We just experienced probably one of the worst thunderstorms and rain that we've ever seen here. And if you would have went out to that chicken coop and those baby chickens, you know what that mother was doing? Here's her wing. There's a mother's wings, okay? Cluck, 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 cluck. Cluck, 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 cluck. And she was calling them unto her to give them protection. And that's what Jesus was saying. I'm calling Jerusalem unto you, unto me to give them protection. What an illustration. As we look at that, how Jesus was comparing that and said, Oh, Jerusalem, here I am if you would just come unto me. You know what he's saying? Take Jerusalem. Oh, Licking Missouri. I'm calling you unto me. Let's get a little. Oh, abounding hope. I'm calling you unto me. Put it personal. You know, we, we put this old Jerusalem, Jerusalem, and it goes right over the top of our head. But now we're saying, what about it, abounding hope? Are you going to Jesus for that comfort and that protection? You see, on this Mother's Day, those of us who are husbands, and fathers, listen to me very closely. We should rededicate ourselves to the daily prayer for our wives and the mothers of our children. And I'm going to go a step further. We should do it every day. Don't wait till Mother's Day. We have probably the greatest asset in the, in the world, in, in our wives and the mothers of our children. And we're neglecting. We're taking it for granted. Men, stop taking it for granted. Ladies, I'm not going to let you get go with that. <laughs> Just because I got on the men, I'm not going to get on you. Men, we need to encourage them on a daily basis. We need to express our gratitude for them. You know, and, and I'm world's worst. I, I, I do. I take my wife for granted. I don't express her verbally how important she is and how much I appreciate her. Uh, but I, I try to do it by actions. But actions aren't good enough. Amen. We need to verbalize our actions. And then we need to assist them. <laughs> <laughs>
I'm guilty. We clean and took took the sheets off of the bed last night or yesterday. I didn't help her make the bed. I sat there and watched television. See? And I had to preach this message this morning. See? <laughs> now, ladies, on Mother's Day, you wives and mothers would do well for yourself if you would accept and be honored for who you are. Many times they'll say, oh, well, you don't need to do that. Oh, I'm good. You don't need to get me a card. <laughs> Dear, yeah, I... you would be good <laughs> in your role as a teacher for God. Oh, is that the bear? I'm sorry, dear. <laughs> bear not put this on YouTube. Bear not put this on YouTube. <laughs> Ladies, if you accept this challenge to be a true teacher for God, you must give yourself totally and genuinely to the worship of the Lord Jesus Christ. You need to go to the throne room of prayer the throne room of prayer on a day-to-day -day basis. If you haven't watched War Room, you need to watch that. Over and over again till you get it. Oh, day by day, we need to, you need to go to the throne room for wisdom, for grace, for guidance, and guess what? For strength. Because that's where it's going to come from. Because if you need it. Uh, if, if your husband's like me, you need strength. I'll guarantee you. Ladies, you need to have faith in the presence, the power, and the purpose of the Holy Spirit as He works in your life. I mean, to trust Him. Have faith in the Holy Spirit, in the presence, the power, and, and the uh, purpose of the Holy Spirit in your life. And, uh, that, that his, He works through you to bless your home and to bless your children. Today, God's arms are open wide. Wider than you can ever bend. It stretches from here to here. And His arms are open wide. Just for you. Put your name in there. Just for you. First person, lost person. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you don't know what comfort is. But once you do know Him as your Lord and Savior, you'll have comfort far ceasing anything that you can ever imagine. Will it be easy? No, I didn't say it was going to be easy. I just said you'd have the comfort that God wants to provide. Wives, <laughs> mothers, ladies, husbands, fathers. Where do you find yourself today? Are you in the mother comfort of God? Or are you seeking for that which He is willing and able to provide for you?